In this video, I'm going to show you four reasons why you do not want to go with Citizens Insurance here in the state of Florida if you have another option. Unfortunately, for a lot of home buyers, there's going to be only one option, and that is Citizens Insurance. So I'm going to share with you some pretty devastating facts about citizens and their policies that a lot of policyholders don't know and understand. And this could be very devastating, especially in the next year or so here in Florida. Okay, a quick recap, what is Citizens Property Insurance? And this is for everyone that hasn't watched part one video. I'll link it below. Make sure, take the time, check it out. It'll give you a really good foundation for this video. So Citizens Insurance, they're formerly known as Citizens Property Insurance Corporation. You're gonna hear the term citizens everywhere. So anytime you hear citizens, you're in the state of Florida, you know we're talking about Citizens Property Insurance. It's a state-run nonprofit. I like to use the term not-for-profit insurance carrier for Florida residents who are unable to find coverage from private insurance companies. Now you can only get a citizen's policy if no other insurer is willing to issue a policy or coverage from private insurers is at least 20% higher than a similar citizen's policy. Because of these reasons, citizens is known as Florida's insurer of last resort. Typically Florida property owners don't turn to citizens because they want to, because they have no other choice. Here's a great stat. Citizens, which is on target to have 1.7 million policies by the end of the year, which is 2023, in July, asked the state for mission to raise rates up to 13%. You're also gonna hear a lot of 14%. So just take it that they ask rates to be raised 13 to 14%. This is actually a quote from the CEO of Citizens. The capacity in the marketplace has shrunk to the point where, unfortunately, Citizens is becoming not the market of last resort, but, in many cases, the market of first resort. He said, adding that it is never the intention for a residential market mechanism. Because Citizens policyholders are the first and most highly assessed group, the true cost of a Citizens policy can increase dramatically following a major disaster. And this is the big problem. Whenever an insurance company has to pay out more than it brought in, they need to make a few adjustments to correct the course. This often means increasing premiums when you renew your policy. But if citizens can't afford to cover all claims, they can levy an assessment up to 45% of your premium. And that's on all policyholders. Let's stop real quick and put this assessment thing in perspective. Let's just say, for example, you've got a $3,000 annual premium. We get hit by another hurricane, there's a lot of damage, a lot of files are claimed, and citizens can't pay. They end up getting an assessment for the full 45%. That means on top of the $3,000, you're gonna have additional $1,350 added to your premium. And that's exactly what could happen here in the future. Here's another quote from the CEO of Citizens. As we grow, then the potential for assessments grows. That's not good. So this brings us to reason number one, lower rates are not guaranteed. The Board of Citizens admits that the premiums it charges are not sufficient to cover the risk it has assumed. If one or more major hurricanes come ashore in South Florida's Atlantic coast, it could quickly wipe out citizens' reserves and force it to impose emergency assessments on not only its policyholders, but other insurance customers across the state. That can mean an additional 45% for current citizens' policyholders. And even those who don't have citizens' policies could be hit by a 2% assessment on all their insurance premiums, both home and auto, if the financial setback is great enough. Citizens has three policy accounts, coastal, personal lines, and commercial lines, which are financially independent of one another and have separate claims, paying resources, and capacities. A devastating storm or series of smaller storms could cause a deficit in one or more account, leaving citizens without enough money to pay all claims. If this happens, Florida law requires citizens to charge that series of assessments until the deficit is paid. So who pays the assessments? Well, both citizens and non-citizens and policyholders must pay assessments in addition to their regular policy premiums when additional funds are needed to pay policyholder claims. But unlike a private insurance company, Citizens is required to levy assessments on its customers if claims paying funds are exhausted. So for Citizens policyholders, assessments can be substantial. It's important to understand the assessment process and how it affects your policy. A Citizens policyholder's assessment potential can be up to 45% of your premium due to the citizen's policyholder surcharge, which is charged first when eliminating a deficit. Private market policyholders are not assessed until the regular assessment, which can be up to 2% of the premium. How assessments work. Assessments are charged in three tiers. First, you have the citizen's policyholder surcharge, next, the regular assessment, and finally, you have the emergency assessment. 
Assessments begin with a citizen's policy surcharge of up to 15% per account for each account in which there is a deficit. Each additional tier is charged only if the level before is insignificant to eliminate citizen's deficit. If there is a shortage in each of the three accounts, policyholders could pay up to 45% surcharge in addition to their annual premium. The overview, it's a one-time assessment. Citizen policyholders only are charged and it's up to 45% of the premium or 15% per account. Next is the regular assessment. If a deficit remains only in the coastal account after the full amount of the citizen's policyholder surcharge is levied, the second tier, a regular assessment of 2%, will be added to accessible policies in the private market. The policies subject to the regular assessment include private market homeowners policies, auto, specialty, and surplus lines policies. It's a one-time assessment. Private market policyholders, including but not limited to homeowners, auto, specialty, and surplus lines policies, and up to 2% of the premium. The third and final tier is the emergency assessment, and it's charged if a deficit remains in any of the accounts after levying the 2% regular assessment. Emergency assessments can be up to 10% per account per year for each citizen's three accounts. It is levied on both citizens and non-citizen policyholders for as many years as necessary until the deficit is resolved. Overview single or multi-year assessment, citizens and private market policyholders, up to 30% of premium per year until any remaining deficit is eliminated, which is 10% per account. Okay, if reason number one didn't scare you enough with possible assessments and your rates going up, well, number two definitely will. And that is lower rates equal lower coverage. Here are some of the citizens insurance policy restrictions. No coverage for water backups, no coverage for carports, porches, or screen enclosures, no coverage for pet liability. No coverage for theft away from the premises. No more than $100,000 in personal liability coverage. No coverage for personal injury, including libel and slander. Jewelry and electronics come with a mere $1,000 coverage limit. And mold endorsements is limited to $10,000. The bottom line, citizens' policies just aren't enough coverage. And reason number three, not everyone is eligible. If the total value of your dwelling and your personal belongings is more than $700,000, or over 1 million in Miami-Dade or Monroe counties, you're not eligible for citizens coverage. And reason number four, even the CEO of Citizens doesn't want to write policies. In a recent article in Insurance Journal, Citizens CEO and President Barry Gilway even stated that it was unfortunate that Citizens was becoming the first or only choice for some Florida homeowners. So when the president of your insurance company wishes he didn't have to write you a policy, that should be telling you something. And here's another good example. This is directly from Citizens' website, their own website. And they're telling consumers, if you can, find policies elsewhere. As the Florida insurance market has improved over the last several years, an increasing number of property owners have been able to obtain property insurance in the private market. Why is this good for you? Private market policyholders often have more coverage options, which we've already shown the limited options that you have with a policy from Citizens, and less restrictive coverage that can be purchased from Citizens, which is true. So the CEO and the company, Citizens, is putting on their website for consumers to do everything you can to find coverage elsewhere before you come to Citizens. That's not good. So before I wrap up, I've got one bonus reason why you should really consider not going with Citizens if you have the options, and that is mandatory flood insurance. This wouldn't be a big deal killer to me because if you're in a flood zone, you're already gonna be required to have flood insurance anyway. And if you're not in a mandatory flood zone, then flood insurance really isn't that expensive. But what every policyholder needs to know is if you're gonna be a new client with citizens, you're gonna be required to have flood insurance. And if you're existing client with citizens, then they have a four year plan that you can read here below that you have to have the insurance in place by these certain dates. So just something important to know and another reason that Citizens is just not the company you want to choose if at all possible. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll be glad to answer. As always, thanks and have a great day.